This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. Are you looking to enhance clarity in production without a PhD in observability? Try Honey Badger Insights. Honey Badger Insights is built around structured events and Honey Badger's new query language Badger QL, which allows you to analyze data, create metrics, and design custom dashboards. All of this is available for free with Honey Badger's monitoring suite, which includes error tracking, uptime monitoring, and more. Explore your data in new ways with Badger QL. It's pretty cool and simple. So give it a try today at honeybadger.io. That's honeybadger.io. In this episode, we're going to have a look at different Ruby on Rails tricks, as well as some other Ruby related tricks. So for the first one, I'm going to generate a scaffold that we're going to use, and we'll just call this the projects, and it'll just have one attribute called name. And so when we go to interact with this, if we look at the index action, we have a link to the show page. If we got rid of the show text on here, and if we just had a link to the project path, or you could just do a link to the project, let's see what this would look like. So we'll start up our application, we'll run our migrations, and then we can go to the path forward slash projects. And when we create a new project, I'll just give it a test name. It creates successfully. And then we go back to the index action and you'll see that it just gives us the class and then some kind of reference. And that's not very useful for the front end. However, if we kept this the exact same, but then we go into the models for the project. And if we created a method called two underscore S, and then we just give it the attribute name for our project's name, which in a later version of Ruby, this could actually be written as a two underscore S equals and then name. Either one would work. We can refresh the page and you'll see now that it actually gives us the name of the project. So that two underscore S is pretty cool. And so for our next trick, we're going to go into the Rails console and we're going to have a look at the difference between present, exist, and any. If we take our project, and let's just find the first item. If we did a present, we'll get a true. And it did have to run a query for that one. And if we already had the project loaded, then it wouldn't have to run another query. But it is pulling up all of the attributes for that project. And if we do a project.exists, we can check where the ID is equal to one. And that also returns true, but this does a select one. It is always going to execute a query. So even if you have the records loaded, it is still going to check it. And then we can do a check for any. So we can do a where ID is one, and then we can do any. And so the any is going to behave like present if the record is already loaded. It'll behave like exists if the records aren't loaded, and it'll generate the same query as exists. So depending on your situation, you may need one or the other, but personally, I think any is typically going to be your best bet, but just make sure that you aren't doing it on a single record check because that's not going to be valid. Whereas present is for the actual record. Next, we're gonna have a look at our layouts. So I'm going to generate a controller and I'm gonna put it under an admin namespace. And then our controller is going to be called the welcomes controller and we'll just have a show action. So in our routes file, I'm going to just make this a resource for the welcome and we only need the show action. So we could come to our admin and then welcomes and that'll show up our welcomes page. However, if we wanted a separate layout for this particular controller, then we could go into the controller to specify a specific layout. However, there's an easier way where under our layouts folder, if we match the controller name exactly, so it's namespaced under admin as we see in the controllers, and then it's called the welcomes controller. We'll create another file in the layouts under admin called the welcomes, and we'll make it a html.erb. Now within here, I'm just gonna copy everything from the application and paste it into our admin welcomes template with the caveat that at the top, underneath the navigation, I'm just going to have a H1 heading 
and we'll call it the admin welcomes. So once we save this, we can go back, we'll refresh the page, and now you see the admin welcomes. On any other page, that won't show up. It's only going to be specific to the controller welcomes that is namespaced under admin. And you want to be careful doing this because it can be overused. In a situation where you have many of these, it might be better to combine the similar items like the head or parts of the body into its own partial that you render out just so you don't have the same code repeated everywhere. And then another little trick that we're going to look at is with something like a SVG. So I've pasted this in here and we can come back and refresh to see what it looks like. It's just a nice little square. However, this is pretty unmaintainable because having to copy and paste this everywhere can be quite cumbersome. So instead, I want to create some kind of helper and I'll just call it some SVG. So with this helper, we can go into our helpers file. We can put it wherever we want. In my applications, I typically have, if it is just for SVGs, I'll have my own SVG helper. So we'll just have some SVG. But the trick here is using here docs. So we can create a here doc, which we can name this whatever we want. It doesn't have to be here doc. It could be like a SVG, but I'll just leave it as here doc for now. And then we can paste in our SVG. But the problem with this is that when we go to view this on our page, it just renders out the actual HTML. So with the here doc, our trick here is that we can call a dot HTML underscore save. And now this here doc is going to be HTML save. You can chain in any other kind of method at the top of the here doc as well. It's not limited to just HTML save. So coming back, we can refresh and then we get our square again. If we wanted to, we could take in a width. We'll set it to a default of 150. A height will also set to 150. And then we can start interplating this in. So for the width, we can interplate in the width. And for the height, we can interplate in the height. And notice we didn't have to use any kind of ERB tags or anything. The here doc is treated like a double quote that we can then just use the simple string interpolation. So we can come back, refresh, and that seems to work. And if we wanted to give it some different dimensions, like an 800 by 150, we can do that as well, coming back and refreshing, and now it's updated. And another neat trick is that you might have a gem added into your application that you want to quickly just look at the contents of that gem. So let's say if we had the faker gem in our application and we wanted to look at the readme or some of the other application code, then from our terminal, we can simply just do a bundle open faker and then we can look at the readme or some of the code within faker. We can close it, but if you do it within VS code, just keep in mind that that did actually close out my original window. And when I close faker, then it also closed my project. So just keep that in mind. And then another neat trick, let's say I'm not working on a Rails application, but instead I'm creating a static web page. It really is static in the sense that it's not using any kind of backend language. I just really need to spin something up and then view it on the web. So I'm going to create a new directory. We'll just call it website. Within the website, we're going to have an index.html. We'll open up this file. And I'm just going to put a h1 heading and we'll call it the website index. Now I want to serve this and then view it within my browser. Well, we could actually use Ruby for that. We can call within that website folder Ruby dash run dash e httpd. And then we can pass in some options with a dash dash and we can specify our port and we want the port to be 3000. That's going to launch Webbrick. And then we can visit our local host, port 3000, and then we see our website index. And what's cool with this is that you can also edit your .zshrc file or bashrc, and then we can create a function. We'll call it serve. And this function is really just going to do the exact same thing where we have ruby-run-ehttpd, and then we'll specify our port, but then we want to take in a variable and once we make these changes, we can then source our home folder and the ZSHRC. And then we can call the serve 
and then our port that we want to serve it on, and then it'll launch the web rig. So this is a handy trick that I use quite often for just simple static sites that I need to get into my browser. Well, that's all the tricks that I have for this episode. If there's any lesser well-known tricks that you know, I'd be really interested to see them. So please let me know what they are and I might cover them in another Grab Bag of Tricks episode. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.